What you are about to watch is a coding challenge. In a moment, I'm going to say hello, welcome to a coding challenge. I apologize if this is happening twice, but I just wanted to show you what it is at the at the beginning uh, because I also made some refinements thanks to things that people in the chat suggested after I finished the coding challenge. So what I am attempting to make here is a what's called a seven segment display. This is based off a Tom Scott video that I'll reference in a second, and you can see here here is the final result. And the things that I've added after the uh, coding challenge finished were a little bit of nicer colors and rounded rectangles. So a little, it's a little bit nicer. Um, so I hope you make something fun with this and enjoy this coding challenge where I do this in kind of a way that's going to make you want to complain about my coding abilities. But that's fine. Complain away. I'm, 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 I'm here for it in the comments. At me. All that stuff. Enjoy. <laughs> All right, hello, welcome to a coding challenge. Okay, I'm very excited about this one. Uh, this is the second try, by the way. The first try, it's been about, got really like, things went haywire. They will go haywire again, but I'm gonna give myself about 30 minutes here, a little late <clears throat> for somewhere I have to be, um, to try to create a seven segment display. Now I got this idea from watching this Tom Scott video about seven segment displays, and Tom Scott talks a little bit about um, how they work and looks at like what kind of letters and numbers they can display and uses a regular expression to try to find the longest word you can write with seven segments displays. So I mean this video I just want to make I just want to make a visualization of the seven segment display which is a in JavaScript, in the browser, in Canvas, which is admittedly kind of a ridiculous thing to do, but I feel like if I can make one then you the viewer can take what I've done and make a bigger display then you can display different words, you could implement Tom Scott's code with the data files and actually visualize that. There's so many possibilities. All right, so let's talk about the seven segments. The seven segments of a seven segment display are like this. One, two, there's seven of them. Three, four, five, six, seven. Now, of course, they're, they're like a nicer design with this sort of looks like this. They're kind of tilted. So I'm going to make a very crude version of it, probably just with rectangles. And I'm not even going to use an array. You could do this in an object-oriented way to keep track of each one of these as an individual object. Then you could have an array of objects in each one of these. There's a lot. I'm going to just do it in the, the crudest way possible. So first, let me try to draw this pattern. And one thing that's going to be important as I do this, it's a good thing I'm on the second try because I really botched this the first time, is if I go down here, this order is super important. Um, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, and decimal place. And okay, so I want to draw them in this order. So let me go back to my code. Uh, let me write a function called seven, seven segment. And then I'm going to say at the beginning, I'm going to use push and pop to kind of connect. The idea is this function, I could make an object. I, I kind of would like to make an object. Yeah, whatever. This function is going to draw all of the segments relative to some point. So I could probably, it might make sense to draw it relative to here. It might make sense to draw it relative. Let's try drawing it relative to here right now. So the first rectangle. Uh, will be, and I'm gonna, this is going to be very hard coded, I admit, admittedly. Let's say um, it's going to be a rectangle and it's going to be at, let, let's, let's go 10 pixels in, 10 pixels down, 100 pixels wide, 10 pixels high. And let's say fill zero. Quit messaging me. <laughs> uh, fill zero. Uh, oh, I've got to call the function. <laughs> oh, I've really lost my sense of how to code. Call the function. There it is. Uh, let's make it a little fatter and let's put it 20 pixels in and 20 pixels down. And let's actually put it 40 pixels in because the next one I want to do, B, I'm going to put at, it should start at like 140 pixels, 40 pixels down. Then it should be a 20 pixels wide, 100. And I could have rotated it. But basically, I want to do that. Then I'm going to do the one on the left. No, no, no. Where, what's next? Then further down again. So everything's the same. Each length is 100, plus there's a buffer of like 20. So I need to make this 160, I think. There we go. And then uh, what's next? Uh, D. And I should put some comments here, right? This is A. This is B. This is C, and of course I could create an algorithm, write a loop, I could use translate, rotate, so many possibilities. I'm not doing it that way, I'm doing it my way. 
again. There's seven. I can do all seven. A D is at the bottom. D is actually really A, but just a lot further down, like 220. <laughs> Let's just guess. There we go. 260. Oop, whoops. No, 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 no. Uh, that's right. Now, what's after D? A, B, C, D, E. <clears throat> uh, e. E is, e is actually um, like C. <laughs> e is very similar to C, but with the x values of A, right, which is 40, and the y value, that's, why is it, huh? What did I do here? Oh, maybe this one is wrong, hold on. Hold on, everybody. Yeah, that's right. This one, this one is a, a little bit off. Uh, it's got to go, oh, it's going to be, oh, ah, actually, it, these have to be a little bit smaller. I forgot about the buffer. Buffer. So this is actually a little bit shorter, like this. There we go. That's kind of right. And then the first one also should be that. <laughs> this, is, this, is the most, this is the most fun I've had coding in a long time. Isn't it nice just to like hard code rec? It's like, it's like the first, this is like the first week of learning to program in P5. It's just like hard coding shapes. I love it. Uh, F. Which one's F? F is up higher. It's like B, but over. So let's start with B. Ah, start with B, but move it to here. There we go. And then, oh, this is F, and then G is the middle. Ooh, this is exciting. G is, most, is like A. It's like A, but it's halfway down. So like, 140? Yeah. Look at that! My seven segment display! Mwah. Part one of this. Now I'm just going to keep going. Okay, so here we go. Good. Excellent. Okay. Now what I want to do is I'm going to say stroke zero and I'm going to say no fill. Okay. Ooh. Ugh. Ugh. I don't like how that looks. <laughs> a little more. Can I get like a, what if I just do like all of these uh, like a little bit less, like 78, 18, Ooh, I'm starting to like this. 18. Oh, come on. Just bear with me. You don't mind me doing this. Just go, go make yourself a cup of tea. I'll be done in a second. There's, sometimes it's just like hard coding stuff. It's just like the loveliest, nicest thing to do. I have, the chat is full of rage. The chat needs to relax. Take a deep breath. Fine. This is soothing. Look at that. Okay. Oh, I like it. It's weird, but I like it. Okay, so this is like nonsense what I've done. You are going to make your own be much nicer version of this with little triangles and all sorts of stuff like that. I, I really botched it here. Um, but what I'm going to do now is uh, I need to figure out a way to turn each one of these on or off. I don't know where this pink marker come, came from, but I love you pink marker. So how am I going to do that? So the idea of a seven segment display is that each one of these is assigned, and there's by the way a decimal point here, which is why there are eight, is assigned a bit in an eight bit number. So uh, you could think of an array of zeros and ones that has eight in it, zero, zero, two, three, four, five, seven, that's, that's nine, right? Where I would go zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, and then the decimal place. And I think sometimes the decimal place is maybe the first or the last bit. I'm not entirely sure. I was trying to look up the documentation for this. So something that I could do, though, is instead of having an array, what if I had any generic number, 256? So I can use something called bit shifting or bit masking. So I can do a bitwise operation. Oh, this is, oh, I'm so happy to do a bitwise operation. You very rarely in programming anymore, especially in JavaScript, actually shift the bits, right? That's usually a thing you're doing in a much sort of like lower level place. So let's say I have this actually as a binary number. And what I want to do is I want to figure out which one of the, if this particular digit, let's say, is on or off. Well, if I do what's called an AND operation with one, Right? An and, by the way, I have the wrong number of things here, but you know, whatever. <laughs> if I do an and operation with one, all of these will always end up zero. And then if a one is here, uh, if a one, sorry, if a one is here, 
I will get a one. If a zero is here, zero and a one is a zero. So I can, if I can shift the bits over and then and with one, I just have to not shift to check this one, shift by one, shift by two, shift by three, shift by four, shift by five, shift by two, blah, 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 et cetera. So, and in order to do this in uh, JavaScript, this is shift the bits to the right, shift the bits to the left, and then this is and. I could also do an or if I wanted to do an or operation. So in other words, if I say for, uh, now here's the thing. Um, I've kind of gone, I went around in circles with this when I was trying this earlier. Um, I want, I need to do something to test. So in other words, if I look down here, this is, uh, um, you can see this is, if the encoding is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or I don't know which one I'm doing, G, right? Then that's seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then um, on, 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 off. So to get a zero, presumably I pass this in. And what I'm going to do, and thank you to BIM Sumi for making this suggestion, I'm going to pass in a value. And what I'm going to do first is just shift it by one, because I got to get rid of the thing for the decimal place. So I'm actually just going to shift it by one before I come in here. And I didn't actually do the decimal place. I'll let you do the decimal place maybe in your version. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say fill val shifted by six or seven or one. I don't know. Now I'm lost. Uh, I need to shift these all. I think, I think the first, I think, ah, if it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, E, F, I want to shift by six, yes. And then ampersand it bitwise with one, right? This is what I'm talking about. And then I also probably, now this is no good. I want to do uh, color mode. I also need to do color mode RGB uh, one. So in other words, what I want is to get a zero. Um, a zero means black and a one means white. So this now, if I shift, shift by five, shift by four, shift by three. I totally did this wrong. I've done it wrong again, but let's just get this out of here. Shift by two, shift by one, and shift by zero. Oh, so close. That doesn't look right. Uh, what did I do? do? Maybe I need to shift the other way here. <laughs> Hold on. Let's do this. There we go. <laughs> okay, that's a zero, except for the fact that I kind of want it um, highlighted to be, um, I kind of want it to be inverted. So I actually should say, um, let me write a function, uh, get color and the value and the amount of shift, and what I'm going to do is return, so I'm going to say uh, the red value, people I think want me to, in the chat they're saying they want me to make it red, the red value is the value with the amount of shifting and ampersand one, and let's forget about this color mode thing, um, and let's actually say uh, 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 map, um, let's, let's do this, uh, um, multiply this by 255, and say GB, it, actually, this is silly, this can just be zero. I'm only doing the red value. And then I'm gonna say fill, uh, get color, get color, and shift by six with that value. Uh, oh, return color RGB, and here we go. All right, this is very exciting. I'm just gonna sit here and copy paste this calmly, smoothly, little by little, for, and I, uh, by the way, if you were wondering why I'm not using a loop here, it's only because I want to drive you crazy. And I've lost my semicolons. A uh, four, three, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, so what's going on now? <laughs> 250 times is value shift, oh boy. This has to be in parentheses. There we go, oh, but it's backwards. So uh, 255 minus R, minus R. No, 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 that was right. Actually, that was right. And then, uh, 
it shouldn't be zero, it should be, actually, I should really let the alpha be this. And then, uh, if the alpha is zero, there we go. Hooray, I made a zero. Okay, so now, look at this. Let's say, let uh, nums equal, so now, if I go here and I say, uh, this is zero, zero, oops, no, go away. Zero. <laughs> Lots of copy and pasting. I can speed this up, somebody. One, two. Okay, now, set nums index index. Let index equal zero. Uh, and then I'm going to say uh, frame rate one, index plus plus, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, and error. Okay, so now we can say index plus plus, index equals index plus one, modulus uh, uh, nums.length. Um, and I'm going to make the frame rate 5, and I'm going to zoom in on this, and here we go. Oh, that's way too fast for me. I can't handle it. Uh, let's put on some music. And thank you very much. There's your seven-segment display counting through the hexadecimal values for 0 through zero. So now, here's the thing. I've got an exercise for you. Could you make a clock out of this? Um, could you could you make a big? Could you make this object oriented? Uh, refine the code. Make the design actually look like a nice seven segment display. Think about color. Make a rainbow seven segment display. So many possibilities. And also go back to this video. And if I scan here towards the end, um, this is the longest word, apparently, that you can display on a seven segment display. So follow uh, Tom's code, it's a node, but there's no reason why instead of using like read file sync, you can just use load strings in P5, get that same database, and you can add this code in and uh, do something fun with it, share it with me, I mean, share it with Tom, <laughs> Tom Scott, <laughs> this is not endorsed by, I just did this on my own, um, but I think it could be some fun possibilities of things you can make, do it in the P5 web editor, share it on the codingtrain.com website, seven segment display somewhere, share it with me on Twitter, at Shiffman, or all those kind of other places, Mastodon, whatever, choo-choo.space, and I'll see you in a future coding challenge. <laughs>